In this exercise, we're going to use the VLOOKUP function to determine the sales tax and also the sales area for each of our customers here based upon the state that they live in. Now, the key component to any VLOOKUP function is the underlying table itself. The underlying table itself is over here to the left and it's shaded in yellow. The range of that table, it starts at A2 and it goes all the way down to D51. Once again, that range is from A2 to D51. What you're going to notice here is I did not include the field names as part of that range. That's very important. The field names are not included in the range. So it's from A2 to D51. The next component of that VLOOKUP table, the underlying table, is to be aware of the columns that make up that table. Column 1 is the most important column. If you look at that column number 1, you're going to notice that it is sorted in ascending order, and that's very important. Whenever you're using a VLOOKUP function, that underlying table, the first column, should be sorted in ascending order. And the reason being is that that first column contains that value that you're looking up. So, for instance, over here, I'm trying to find the sales area and also tax for customer number one, but he or she lives in Massachusetts. The function will come down and look up, once again, based upon the first column, I'm going to retrieve my answer. Okay, I'm going to have to match on that first column. So once again, column number one will contain your primary lookup value. It always does. It has to. And that column number one should also be sorted in ascending order. Column number two, or column number three, or column number four, usually will contain your secondary lookup values or your answers. Well, what do I mean by that? Let's click on column number two, which has your full state spelling. So the state is fully spelled out. If that's what you're looking for. That answer is in column two. Column number three, would contain the sales tax information for each of the individual states. Once again, column three, your sales tax based upon the individual state. Column four would contain the sales areas for each of the individual states. Okay, let's place our cursor in cell K2, and we're now going to use the VLOOKUP function to determine the sales area for each of our customers based upon the state they live in. Click on F of X, 
type in VLOOKUP. Once we found VLOOKUP, click on it. And the first line is basically asking us for what's the lookup value? The lookup value is the state. So I'm going to click here. In this case for customer number one, it's Massachusetts, which happens to be in cell J2. So we just clicked on it. That's our lookup value. Line two, the table array. The table array means the main lookup value table. So we have to define that main main table lookup table. So I'm going to come over here and highlight everything that's in yellow. Starting at A2. All the way down to D51. And I want to make that an absolute because I'm going to copy that formula all the way down. So I want to make that an absolute, that table array. And how I do that is by hitting F4. And what we see is that that range now has dollar signs. Dollar sign A, dollar sign 2, dollar sign D. So we've made it into an absolute. Next, we're going to go to row 3. And what I'm looking for is the sales area. Okay, I'm looking for my answer. Okay, and my answer for the sales area happens to be in column 4. Right. Sales area is not in column 1, it's not in 2, 3, but it's in column 4. So I'm going to put in 4. And in this case, for line 4, I want an exact match. Okay? I want an exact match. I don't want to be guessing here. We want an exact match. And if we want an exact match, it tells us right here. We want to type in false. Click on OK. And we're going to copy that pattern all the way down. In this next example, I'm going to use a named range to define my underlying VLOOKUP table. Now, this is a lot easier in the sense that you don't have to go back and forth highlighting the underlying table. Also, you don't have to remember to put in the F4 or make it an absolute. So how we go about that is by highlighting just one time that underlying table. Once again, you're going to see that I'm not highlighting the field names. I'm starting at A2, going all the way down to D51. I've highlighted it. I'm coming up to this area right here. And I'm going to give a name to it. So we're going to call it Amazon. Hit enter. I'm going to click outside of it. And now what I can do to make sure that it took is come up to this area, hit the down arrow, then highlight Amazon. So you can see that it's highlighted that entire range that we just selected. We're going to come back to cell N2 and we're going to determine the actual tax rate. Okay? 
and we're going to determine the tax rate for each of the states. We're going to use the lookup. That tax rate is based upon the state that a customer lives in. So I'm going to click on the MA, which happens to be in J2. Line 2, what is the underlying table? In this case, I used a name range. Makes it a lot easier. So if I'm, if I forgot what my named range was, while the cursor is still blinking here, what I can do is tap F3. The names, I only have one of them. Click on Amazon, hit OK. Column index. This is really important. Now, once again, where's our answer? Where is the actual rate for the sales tax for my individual town? And where it's located, it's not in column one, it's not in column two, but my sales tax is in column three. And I do want an exact match. So I'm going to type in false. Another way of putting this in, if we want an exact match, we can type in either false or put in zero. It also means false. Hit OK. Copy my formula all the way down. Again, I was determining the tax rate. I already had formulas in here for my tax cost, which was really determined by the sales price times the tax rate. Basic formula. We already know how to do that. Total cost formula. I already did it which would be my sales price plus my tax cost. And for those brave individuals who want to do it all in one step, I've already created a formula over here, which will do it just in one step. It's basically what it's doing. The innermost formula, we're determining, we're using our VLOOKUP, second level is we're adding one to that B lookup and then I'm multiplying it by the sales price for the item. Thank you.